In today's video, I'm going to be drawing with this beautiful feathers from Macau parrots. These were given to me by a friend, Stephanie, aka Muffin Saurus. So these are the three feathers that I have and you can see the colors on each side. They are different. The parrots would actually drop feathers so these are not plucked from the birds. And the texture here is really nice. It's really interesting to see the feather up close like this. So this is the shaft. This part here, it's hollow. This is the after feather. And the shaft will continue to go up to the end. And all these lines that extend from the shaft, they are called the barbs. And you can see the feather. They sort of stick together. So this whole part, this big piece here it's called the vein and on this side we have blue and some yellow or brown on the other side we have yellow this is actually one whole piece so when the bird flaps its wing the air will actually not pass through the feathers and that's why birds can fly this feather it's really light so that's why we have the saying feather light or feather weight so let's take a look at the other feathers that I have. This is the same color. The last one that I have is red and blue. This red feather has a much larger shaft. I was told that I should cut out this part here to make it sharp so that I can write with it. And this is the red on the feather. It's really beautiful. And this is a very long feather, so the bird must be quite big. Can you imagine drawing with this while you are outdoors sketching on location? As if you are not attracting enough attention, this will definitely turn people's head. And this is so long that it's actually longer compared to my A4 drawing pad. Some art shops do sell feathers for writing or drawing purposes. Some of them have the metal nib attached to the feather. That's to protect the shaft and will obviously allow you to use the feather much longer. This is how it sounds when I hit the shaft with my finger. Can you hear how hollow it is? And now let's cut the feather to create a sharp tip. I actually can't bear to cut this beautiful feather. It sounds like I'm cutting plastic. Looks like there's something inside. So I may have to actually just push those things back so that when I dip the shaft into ink, this part here, it can hold some ink. I was actually thinking of using India ink, but this ink is going to coat the pen and it's also going to probably clog the pen. So I'm going to use something that's a bit safer and you can see all the crusty ink uh, particles from the bottle. So this is exactly the type of ink you do not want to use in fountain pens. Can you imagine this inside your fountain pen? It's definitely going to clog the pen. So let's use this the Atramentis document brown. If you have a metal nib on the shaft, then I suppose you can use India ink, but if not, I wouldn't advise using India ink with this. This does not hold a lot of ink, so it looks like I may have to reload this quite often. All right, the ink flow is very good, maybe too good. The reason is probably because I'm drawing with that broad area of the cut. So if I were to draw with this feather a bit more vertically, I can get thinner lines. So I do have to draw with the feather more vertically to control the lines. There's a very nice tactile feeling when drawing on the paper. I can definitely feel the feather. It's not as hard compared to metal. And because of that, this will definitely wear out. 
the tip will definitely become blunt when you draw with it um, very often I'm not sure if you can hear the feather on the paper it feels very flashy drawing with the feather if you are using this outdoors I am very sure you will be very self-conscious this part here, the shaft, it's a bit too short, which means um, it's very easy for me to get my hands dirty. So I guess that's why some of the feathers, they are sewed with the metal nib, which makes it more, which makes the feather cleaner to use. Otherwise, when you dip the feather in the bottle, in the ink bottle, chances are you're going to get some ink on your hand. And when you're drawing, you may also get some ink on your hand. So that's where the metal nib is very useful. Oops, too much ink again. So this can actually be quite good for coloring like large areas. So you have to constantly reload it. And you have to be very careful how much ink you put on the paper. If you're going to work with watercolor, then uh, ink like this is going to take a long time to dry. So chances are you won't be able to work with watercolor over the ink. But this pen, sorry, this feather, I think it's more suitable for uh, just ink drawings. It might actually be easier for me to draw with the other side, the underside of the feather, the tip. So this is definitely easier for me to draw with, to control. It's way easier compared to drawing on, with this side. And there is this, sometimes the tip will produce this very squeaky sound, which is um, not nice. If you want to keep the feather for a longer time, I do recommend using a metal nib with it. So here I have this hunt nib that I think I can attach to the feather. So this small hunt nib does fit. So using a metal nib like this will give you more control and this will provide more consistent ink flow. There are probably nibs that are designed specially for feathers, basically nibs that are longer so that they are easier to use with ink bottles. I'm not sure how I feel when drawing with this feather. It feels like I have been transported to a time before pens were invented. These are certainly very fun to use, but I'm not sure if I'll be using this that often. And I certainly don't want to wear out the nib. So I'm going to use this feather probably to decorate my brush holder instead. So these definitely look good in the brush holders. All right, let me know what you think about these feathers. Do you draw with them? Do you use them? Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.